Okay, I want to roll with the example I kind of ended up with in the last video, this fraction thing, which is almost a primitive, but not really a primitive. It's, it's, it's like an int, but it's a little bit bigger than an int, but it's close enough to being a primitive. You know, it, let, we should make it a struct, but right now I have it as a class, so I can demonstrate the differences, some more differences, between value types and reference types. So let's say fraction, fract1, Get new fraction, and then in here I'm going to use C sharp 3O's uh, member initialization syntax. Uh, numerator will be 1, denominator will be uh, 2, so we have a fraction of 1 half. Now, I may want to make these properties, I may not want to. I don't really care, it's just a demo, and I'm considering fraction to be kind of a primitive anyway, so we'll just go with that. And I should add a bunch of functions in here that do things like reduce the fraction and that sort of thing, but I'm not too stressed about it. Just an example, okay? Let me, uh, you know, I should draw the stack portion of memory to be somewhat smaller than the heap, simply because the stack is significantly smaller than the heap. It's one reason why we like the heap is, one, we don't need to know up front at compile time everything that we will require as far as RAM goes, and the heap is significantly larger than the stack. Anyway, uh, all right, so fract1 will go on the stack, all right, main begins, and here's fract1, and this new here, since new, we're operating on a reference type, then new goes out to the heap and says, oh, I need room for a fraction, let's put it right here, all right, and the fraction is big enough to hold two ints. Right, and the address of that fraction, new returns that, and we assign that to fract1, so then fract1 is referencing this fraction. The values are one half, like so. All right, pretty, hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Let's, let's make another fraction. I'll go down here. Fraction, fract2. Uh, gets... Let's make this simple. Fract one. All right. No. Well, hopefully, hopefully that's pretty straightforward, and hopefully you're kind of used to this by now. But here's fract two. All right. And let's say the address out here is fifty two eighty one. I'm just making up some arbitrary RAM address. And so, literally, this reference for fract one would have five two eight one in it. Well, when I say fraction, fract 2 gets fract 1, it doesn't need to go and look at the heap. It just says, oh, there's a 5, 2, 8, 1 down here. Let's copy that into fract 2. So 5, 2, 8, 1. And then I'll draw the theoretical reference here, like so, even though that arrow doesn't really exist in RAM. It kind of helps to see, hey, this this address, this we're referencing this object. All right, now... I'm hoping you have seen a demo like this before where I can say, okay, fract1, or let's do fract2 dot, I said fract2, fract2, I should be consistent with my use of t's here, fract2 dot numerator, let's set that to 555. Okay, some number that kind of doesn't make sense, but whatever. Fract2 dot numerator gets 555. Well, if I console right line, fract one dot numerator, what 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 will it print? Hopefully, this is an example you've seen before. If not, then good. Uh, what's going to print? Pause the video and think about that. All right, right here we say fract two dot numerator gets gets five five five. So I'm going to follow fract two's reference out to this object and change the numerator to five five. Five. So when I print fract one dot numerator, we go to fract one and say, oh, okay, it's this object out here, and we print the numerator, it will print five five five. It won't print the one that we originally had in the object because we modified that same object through a second reference here. All right, let me just uh, control a five this, and you can see, yes, the output is five five five. All right, so that's uh, that's that's reference types. Now, what if I change it? Here's where you really need to pause the video. If you're not pausing the videos when I tell you to pause the videos and go work something out, how is the behavior, or how will the behavior change 
when I change this to a struct. All right, what's it will change, I'll tell you that much at least. What What's going to change, and then how would the drawing change as well? If, now that I've said struct here, it's a simple little change, but now that I've said struct, how is this code going to change? Pause the video, think about it, work it out, code it up, mess with it, wrestle with it, come back. Okay, I'm actually going to keep this drawing uh, safe, and we'll do another drawing here. Same thing again, here's our RAM, and and it's logically split into two pieces. The stack in the heap here and the first thing we do is we say fraction fract one gets new fraction with all this stuff well <laughs> the new no longer goes out on the heap because it's a struct it's a value type all right so fract one is literally placed directly on the stack here is frac one and we say numerator is one denominator is two there's nothing out here on the heap Right now, I create a second instance of a fraction, frac2, but again, these are value types. These are not references, so this is not a 4-byte reference referencing the same object that fract1 is. It is the object. Right? It is the actual value, hence the term value type. So here we go. Here's frac2. It's a second object, a second instance, frac2, and then it just so happens in in .NET land with value types, the assignment operator is defined to just copy the members one by one for us. So literally it says one, copy up into here, two, copy there. It copies the bits for us straight over. Hence the term value types. You see how these this fraction is now behaving more like an integer? If I said you know, int first gets five, and I said int second gets first. Well, second is a separate instance of an int from first, so it's literally going to copy the bits from first into second, and that's the exact same behavior we're seeing here with these fractions. We're literally making our own value types. So here we go, here's frac2, it's got one and two in there, and then I turn around and say frac2.numerator gets 555. Five, five. Well here's frac2, the object, sitting on the stack, and the numerator we will change to 555. Five, Five. All right. Notice that didn't modify fract one's numerator here. All right. Fract one maintained its own instance or copy of itself. So when I say, "Hey, write out fract one's numerator," uh, we will see the value one and not five, five, five. So let me just run this and, and prove that that's true. You can see here. Oh, here's a one. All right. Anyway, hopefully that's a pretty straightforward demo of the differences between a a value type and a reference type. Um, that's definitely one of the big behavior change, behavioral changes. Semantics is what we call that. The semantics have changed significantly when I when I change this to a struct versus a class. Now in the next videos, we're going to examine more about these structs and value types and some caveats. They're actually I, when I first came to C Sharp, I was big on using structs. I thought they were really cool and wanted to, wanted to do all these value types. And it turns out that I didn't really understand it, and it was confusing and difficult. And I ended up shooting my foot off uh, more times than I needed to. So uh, we're going to talk about those caveats, and hopefully you favor classes. But once in a while, a type comes up like fraction, where it makes sense. Yeah, this is kind of a primitive. Let's treat it more like a primitive. And I want primitive semantics here, where it copies instead of Assigns. Let me before I end this video. Let me just show you a built-in value type. Date time. This is one we use a lot. And if we look at date time by clicking on it and hitting F12, which goes to the definition, you can see date time. As far as the .NET designers or the designers of the date time class are concerned, date time it, it's it's almost a primitive. All right. So they judiciously said, well, let's make it a value type and thus make it a struct because date time it's almost an int and it's almost a float it's this small little thing all it does is store a date and a time so it makes sense that that we make it a value type